Hello and welcome to the Morning Sports Briefing, brought to you at 8am every morning on the New Zealand Sports Radio. Hi, I'm Paul and I'll be your host for this evening on the channel, on the channel, no, on the, on the, <laughs> on the show today. We have NRL Chasers um, Union Stars, another audacious Premier League plan, um, a COVID stalled South African greats comeback and the Rugby Championship may take place in one city. And to kick us off, we're going to pass go straight over to Stephen from the Deep South, who will take us through the football news. Yes, good morning, Paul, and good morning, everyone, tuning in this morning around the football world today. We wrap up the fourth round of the Belarusian Premier League. Serie A joins the relaunch dream party. Spurs listen to the critics for a change. But first, yes, it is the Premier League with another audacious plan to complete this season yet again. It seems like about third or fourth time we've reported this story from the Premier League guys. The new plan could see four games per day played at Wembley Stadium in a TV-only behind-closed-doors event. Most Premier League sides have about nine matches left to play and they're all eager to finish the season so they don't lose out on that TV revenue money that they're all so keen on getting. This is all part of the plan to see football back in action about June or July sort of time period so they can get their season completed. And then like we talked about the other day, see the European competitions finish after that in a nice little three-week window. So everyone's got their nice little plan and all I can say to that is good luck, EPL. You're going to need it to see this one go through. Tottenham have reversed their decision to use the government's payment scheme for for the staff following the criticism from their own supporters, and they'll now pay them in full for the April and May months of wages. It seems a little bit of pressure can do a lot for the Tottenham team as they're already spending that Harry Kane money before they've even got a bid from anyone uh, for the future transfer window. The Italian Football Federation is hoping that they can test all Serie A players for COVID-19 before the start of May so that they can get their season back underway soon after that. Again, the league still has just over 12 rounds remaining and Italy have been one of the hardest hit countries. But much like Spain, as we reported yesterday, the worst seems to be in their past, hopefully. Juventus lead the Italian top flight and only one point ahead of Lazio and then they are nine points clear of the third place into Milan. So finally, in the Russian Belarusian Premier League, it's just the one game that took place overnight to wrap up the fourth round, and that was Slavia, who were hosting Rural Brest this morning, and in front of 715 dedicated fans, neither side could find a goal, which is a bit of a shame. It ended up 0-0, and even though the Rural Brest forward uh, was sent off, uh, that guy, Danello, going for a double yellow card, so he's going for a red card, giving the chance for Slavia to sneak one right at the end, couldn't get the job done. As a result, it ended nil-nil. With that result now, we can see the final standings for this weekend and at the end of round four. And I'll tell you what, folks, it's really good news because my boys, Torpedo, sit right at the top, up there in the Champions League qualifying spot, top of the table, outright for us after beating the other team who are also on nine points. That's Energetic, who sit in second. And then it's pretty good news for Paul's team as well as Slutz are up there in third spot as well. Ashford's team's doing pretty well for themselves as well. In fifth position, um, really in a good chance to attack. They're down there on seventh, seven points. And it is a resurgent uh, Gordas side. Our team is getting pretty excited about this one. They look like rubbish when we come into this, but they have stormed their way back in. We'll Paul, to what's a, going on? Well, we're going to make an apology because we have brought up the uh, a table on screen, but I seem to have got the order of the teams wrong. But the points are still right, so don't worry, folks. Ah. Um, when, when you've got... Four, four, is it five teams? No, four teams on seven yes. points. Um, another four teams on six points. It's a bit of a tight table, isn't it? Let's be honest. And uh, what separates them uh, can vary between different, uh, what's the word, different suppliers of tables as well. Uh, some leagues can separate by uh, victories against other sides. So you see at the top there, Torpedo, Torpedo and Energetic are both on nine points. Uh, but because Torpedo beat Energetic this weekend... That puts them on the top as the versus sort of thing. But, yeah, you get a rough idea of where they all sit. Our team's doing pretty well inside the top five. And uh, Gorda, yeah, like we say, resurgent down there. And around the ninth position, they'll be looking, well, the way they're playing, to go straight up that table. It's uh, no good down the bottom, though. Belshina is sitting right at the bottom. Uh, they are winless in the relegation spots along Smy alongside Smolovici, who are down there with them as well. But that is it from football news today, Paul. Um, enjoy it, everyone. We'll see you again tomorrow.
Yeah, maybe we'll have to give John um, Bolobiski. Um, the uh, for <laughs> <laughs> as he's not chosen a team. Um, so thank you very much for that update, um, Stephen. And now we'll hand you over to Arswin for the cricket update. Good morning, Paul, and I have to say, great pronunciation by Steve from the South there, isn't it, with some of those Belarusian names? So, um, surprised he gets his tongue around those ones. But uh, moving into cricket news, and COVID, as mentioned in the headlines, COVID stalls South African greats' comeback plans. Now, if you hadn't heard, A.V. de Villiers, who retired rather prematurely from most people's point of view, is being talked into coming back for the T20 World Cup by Mark Boucher. Now, this is obviously all determined on whether COVID-19 plays a part or not. So if we don't get to see um, A.B. de Villiers play, it'll be COVID-19's fault. Obviously, we'd like to see A.B. de Villiers out there at the T20 World Cup if it goes ahead, because we know what a quality player he is. Now, in the will they, won't they situation, the IPL, which is the Indian Premier League, not any sort of soccer tournament, uh, we wait bated breath to see whether that will go ahead or not. The BCCI, who have signed a five-year deal with approximately $3.5 billion, is desperate for it to go ahead, not surprisingly. A further delay is inevitable as India have rem uh, remains in lockdown. Now, there was supposed to be an announcement tomorrow about um, the tournament going ahead, but with India being in lockdown, there's not much chance of anything happening soon. The BCCI president, Surav Ganguly, is monitoring the developments very, very closely. And even if they do have an opportunity to go ahead, they have the problem with the T20 World Cup. So the only window that they have for the IPL to go ahead is really now or very soon. Later on in the year as the T20 World Cup, if that goes ahead, then all the windows would be taken up and this year's version of the IPL wouldn't go ahead. So that's today's uh, cricket news, uh, Paul. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arshwin, and let's hand you, over, hand you over to Stephen from the Far North, who will take us through the birthdays today. Yes, good morning, uh, everybody out there. Now, this morning, we have a Highlander in Japan. We have a promising Blues prop, and we have a dual NRL winner, and that's pretty much where we start. Jeremy Smith is a former professional rugby league player, a New Zealand Kiwi international representative. He played lock and back row. Smith played for the Melbourne Storm, whom he won the 2007 NRL Grand Final, and also with the St. George Illawalla Dragons, whom he won the 2010 NRL Grand Final. He also played for the Cronulla Sharks and the Newcastle Knights. He was also the co-captain of that particular NRL team. Jeremy Smith, born this day, the 14th of April in 1980. He's 40 years old today. Moving along to Sione Mafilio is a New Zealand professional rugby union footballer who plays as prop for North Harbour in the Mighty Ten Cup and for the Blues in Super Rugby. Mafilio made his debut for North Harbour in 2014 and has racked up 53 caps and amassed 49 caps for the Blues since his debut for the Auckland franchise in 2015. Sione to Louis Mayo Mafilio, born this day, the 14th of April 1993 in Auckland. He's 27 years old today. And finally, Dan Pryor is a rugby union player who currently plays as loose forward for the Sun Wolves in the International Super Rugby Competition and for Munukata Sanix Blues in the Japanese Top League. Pryor represented Northern in the Mighty 10 Cup between 2010 2017 and the Blues, where he made one appearance in 2012. But he is best known for his time at the Highlanders, where he made 34 appearances between 2015 and 2018. Dan Pryor, born this day, the 14th of April, 1988, in Auckland. He is 32 years and old, old 32 years old today. Just a, a little bit of a footnote. He is the grandson of the great Albie Pryor, who played many years in Auckland during the 60s. I think Albie Pryor may have also played for New Zealand Māori as well. So once again, Dan Pryor emulated his uh, grandfather as well by playing a couple of games for New Zealand Māori. Back to you, Paul. Thank you, Stephen. Is uh, Dan Pryor best known for his time at the Highlanders or is he best known for his hair? Um, uh, the, uh... A bit of both. <laughs> bit of both. <laughs> Well, happy birthday to all of those guys. Hope they have a great day today. Um, it's looking a bit rainy and grey here in Hamilton, but uh, hopefully they have a wonderful one themselves. <coughs> Moving on to rugby news now then. Um, and according to uh, Ben Whittaker, the um, Rugby Australia's general manager, there is a definite, definitely a collective commitment to prioritising test match footy. 
Well, that's news to me because I think we've all been talking about the prioritisation of the club game and community rugby and getting that that started. Um, but uh, apparently, Sanzar Talks have been going ahead and they are committed to playing the rugby championship. News out of South Africa over the weekend suggested that they expect it to happen in August and September, which I do, which is the current window for it. And I do think that is perhaps um, a little ambitious or, or optimistic, really. Uh, a number of plans have been uh, drawn up, apparently, uh, which include a scenario where they play six, ga- six games, or sorry, play the whole, the whole tournament in six weekends in one country or one state or even just one city. So there is definitely a commitment to try and get some uh, test match footy out there, even if it does mean uh, putting all the teams in to one location um, and even if it does happen in November and December. So uh, we'll have to wait for more news on that. I do think that August-September window is perhaps ambitious and unlikely to go ahead personally. Uh, Also, um, there is no update yet on a pay deal between Rugby Australia and the RUPA. Um, negotiations will continue today um, and uh, are both sides hopeful to get something sorted out in the next 48 hours. We'll obviously bring you updates on that um, as, they appear, as, as, they, as they come along. Um, over in Scotland, unsurprisingly, we have seen that the players and the um, executive there have decided to take pay cuts, have agreed to take pay cuts, in that one, as the head of Scottish rugby is the best played, sorry, best paid um, uh, rugby administrator in the world, uh, it's unsurprising that he is taking a pay cut. There obviously there was big question marks around here, the pay he got and the bonuses he's been receiving recently, um, even before we hit this coronavirus um, issue. So, unsurprising to see those pay cuts um, have come there. It's I guess it's more that we are expecting every union to basically come out with this, and it's just a matter of when they announce it, really, and how long it goes on for. That's your rugby news. I'm going to hand you back to Stephen from the far north, who's taken through our league league update. Good morning again, everybody. This story, the Sydney Morning Herald has reported that NRL clubs reportedly considering poaching big names from overseas if the shortened Australian season gets underway before competitions from around the world start. If that plan eventuates, the Rugby League and Rugby Union competitions and other part of the world would remain on hiatus. So it's a good opportunity for the NRL to basically move in. Wallaby Quaid Cooper and dual international Sonny Bill Williams would be prime candidates for an NRL poaching raid. I think you can also throw Israel Folau into that lot as well. Williams recently signed that whopping $10 million deal with the Toronto Footpack and Wolfpack and uh, also the uh, Wallabies First five, Cooper would be playing in Japan if had the uh, coronavirus outbreak not happen, happened. Now, according to the Herald, at least one NRL club is preparing to uh, gauge Falau's interest in returning to the competition where he made his professional debut as a teenager for the Melbourne Storm. On saying all that, it would be interesting to see whether an NRL deal with Falau would be re- registered after the Australian Rugby League Commission Chairman Peter Verlandes blasted the dual international for making homophobic comments on the social media. Cooper currently is training in Brisbane alongside Bronco star Tavita Painga Jr. And it's we've obviously all seen the, these p- amazing passes that have gone viral the last few days, amazing trip passes. So the World, World Cup star has previously said he would be open to playing in the era NRL. I wouldn't mind playing... NRL just for one season or even just see what it may come to so training with the lads will probably just give me the nice uh, fit if uh, the project gets off the ground if it doesn't happen it doesn't happen I'm happy with what I've been able to achieve but if the opportunity arose I would love to give the NRL a nudge and um, just pretty much finally guys we just had some uh, news uh, confirmed to us as well. NRL chairman Peter Verlanders has been forced to confirm that NRL teams will not be stripped of competition points earned in the first two rounds despite a stunning push from a Sydney Roosters boss Nick Politis. Verlanders again f- confirmed the NRL is not considering taking away competition points as it considers ways to restart the competition next month. The points will stand, Verlanders told the Daily Gra- Telegraph on Monday. There is no way we are taking anybody's points away it isn't even on the table now there's been a bit of a a stoush between the the melbourne storm coach craig bellamy who's criticized the roosters for suggesting points should be scrapped in the nrl 
first two rounds. Melbourne Storm coach Craig Bellamy has criticised the Roosters for even suggesting that two points should be scrapped from those two two rounds. Politis from the Roosters caught plenty of criticism for his new recall to start the season again. Of course, Craig Bellamy having a real crack at them, saying they are just trying to look after the interests of his own club. Well, I guess when you're sitting down in 12th place and you haven't picked up any points, what are you going to say? They obviously just want to uh, get a new start to the season off on the right track. And that's Rugby League news for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thank you, Roach Stephen, for that update. Uh, moving into general sports now and back over to the iRacing uh, that we talked about yesterday where Kiwi um, came second. Um, what also happened there was Carl, Carl Larson um, was, uh, was heard uh, using a racial slur over the microphones uh, during the race um, aimed at his uh, at, at, at his spotter who he lost connection with and uh, he has since been um, suspended without pay uh, indefinitely um, so far for, for, for doing that immediately uh, it's uh, a bit um, ironic that, uh, that he did that when he came through the diversity program he's half Japanese um, in, in getting into the league and it was part of the league trying to be it's part of uh, promoting more diversity in the league so um yeah a very a very bad thing for him to say he has apologized since obviously um, and says that say uh, yeah, it was unacceptable as to um what he did this eye racing is causing a few issues as bubba wallace um one week ago rage quit from a, an official race uh, and admitted it on twitter straight afterwards though um his sponsor uh came back uh, and uh, fired him for rage quitting so clearly some of the racers need to get used to this um, uh, be, being in at, well in isolation and this eye racing because it's causing uh, a few of them some serious problems. Uh, in other news, um, the Tokyo delay could cost or is expected to cost the IOC several hundred million dollars um, in additional costs. The majority of the costs will be borne by the organising committee in Japan and not impact the IOC but even so the IOC will still be uh, impacted by that. Uh, it's too early to say how much uh, this uh, this will cost, this delay. But already, um, the uh, initial cost for the games had been set at $11.9 billion when they won the bid. That had already risen, risen to $20.6 billion um, before the coronavirus. Uh, and obviously, this delay is only going to add to those costs. All but about $2.9 billion of it is going to be taxpayers' money as well. So... Uh, we could see some public backlash in Japan around the Olympics because it's clearly costing them an awful lot of money to host um, this event. Let's hope that it goes smoothly when it does go ahead uh, and uh, raises, uh, well, they cover as much of their money as they can. You're now up to date with all your sporting news today. Thank you very much for joining us at 8am as we are here every day on New Zealand Sports Radio. And overnight, we have had another acceptance to come on the Long Talk. The CEO of Tasman Rugby will be coming on the Long Talk soon. So look out for that interview as well. Recently, we had an interview with Cameron Bell, who's the CEO of, the, of Northern Rugby. And uh, that was appreciated by a lot of you on the channel. So if you'd like to watch that interview, it's available here on the Facebook page or, and also as a podcast as well. Don't forget to like the Facebook page and give uh, the the podcast um, subscribe to the podcast that's what I'm looking for thank you very much folks have a great day stay safe and catch you all tomorrow <laughs>